Three, two. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Chris Nowoski, and welcome back to another episode of the TKR Podcast. We are joined by Craig Epstein, talking Rutgers hoops, this time after a big win over Michigan State. <laughs> Uh, 84, uh, 63, I believe it was. I hope I got the right number. I didn't double yeah. check. Uh, so was... okay, I did get the right. So, phew. <laughs> uh, anyway, Craig, Craig was at the game the other day over the weekend. Um, you know, a little bit of a curb, curb stomping. Uh, you know, butt kicking as uh, coach, uh, coach Tom Izzo said. Uh, so Craig, man, you were there. Uh, you know, what did you see from the team? What was the atmosphere like in the arena? Uh, just from the team perspective, that was probably the best forty minutes of basketball I think we've seen all year. The only, I think the only other competitive, like the only other thing, a game I can think of, they were that good was probably the Nebraska game. Mm -hmm. But even that game, they started off kind of slow, then ended up scoring like 93 points. So that was, Mm -hmm. that was, that was a very good game for them. But this game, I think statistics wise, statistical wise, is an even better like offensive performance. They shot, I think, like 62%. Yeah, 62%. I mean, that, that alone is just incredible. And uh, really, just like you said, they just, be, pretty much just beat the crap out of Michigan State, yeah. number thirteen team in the country. Tom Izzo, Michigan State. They just really, really took it to them. They had six. I, I saw they had six players mm-hmm. uh, and double figures. Uh, Paul Mulcahy once again put up just a, a stellar game. He was just he was great. Like he put up his first career double double mm-hmm. with um what do you have? 12, Fifteen points and twelve assists. 12 assists. Yep. I mean that's just that's incredible. And uh, Cliff was six for six. They were probably all dunks, but like they were just off of just perfect passes. A lot of them from Paul McKay. I mean, this guy's court vision, this guy's court vision is off the chart. Like (laughs) I watch it, like I'll watch him from my seat and Mm -hmm. I'll just be like, I don't even see that. And I'm watching the play develop. Meanwhile, he's, he's in the thick of things and he sees this (laughs) stuff. It's, it's insane. He, and, um, the, and I saw people talking about, you know, the pivot foot, he basically Mm -hmm. just like, YMCA balls the opponent to death. It's, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. It's just, it's, it's really incredible. And the last two games have just been an absolute, just, he's just been great. And he's, if he can, you know, continue that going forward, he could be one of the better players in the Big Ten. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he leads the conference in assists per game. Um, he's at over, over five overall on the season. I think he's at 6.5, you know, in Big Ten play alone. So, He's been phenomenal. Uh, you know, and like I did he, see he had, recently they did announce the uh, the Big Ten Player yes, of the Week. I was going to go saw, there, yeah. Yeah, I saw I, – because I saw Ron kind of campaigning <laughs> for him on Twitter. But then I saw that it ended up going to – surprise, Kofi Coburn. Because yeah. why not, I, mean, I guess. He, he did have like a 30-point game. <laughs> he did have like a great – Double-doubles. Yeah. I mean, he he was definitely deserving. But yeah, you know, I, I, wonder, I wonder if Harper got a, a new phone yet or anything. <laughs> yeah i know i thought it should have gone to fall to be honest but yeah. you know yeah, uh I mean, or at least at least knew. it should have been co- it should, at least should, i thought should have been like co-players of the week because i know they've done that in the past doing that definitely. So, yeah, yeah so i would have liked to see you know paul and kofi get it but you know yeah. it's rutgers so exactly you know what? exactly you know all the other teams get a guy there the big 10 play of the week and rutgers you know Sometimes maybe got a freshman years ago, but that's that's about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you were there also, you know, covering the game. Um, just f- from the atmosphere a- aspect, you know, what was the arena like? Yeah, I thought the arena was very good. Uh, it's just very loud. I do think the 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 masks probably do muffle the noise a little mm-hmm. bit, mm-hmm. but I mean, I thought it was very loud. It's just uh, you know, typical typical uh, rack Jersey Mike's arena, whatever you want to call it. I thought it was. I thought it was electric. The fans were, I thought the fans were great. Like they basically always are. Sure. The student section was great. Uh, so, you know, it, I mean, it's still, still, uh, still the same place that they seem to play much better at than on the road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, going back to something you alluded to earlier, uh, Rucker shot 61.5% for the game. They yeah. shot, they saw the same percentage actually uh, 16 for 26 in both the first half and the second half, you know, that that's as efficient you can get. Um, they were forty-five uh, percent from from the, on on three pointers, which is, you know, really really good for them. Um, like you said, six players scoring double figures. I mean, those are the only guys who scored, but uh, they obviously you know did very well. Eighty-four points. You know, they shot very well. Um, Paul McKay he had had a bunch of you know behind the back assists, like you were talking about his court vision. Um, you know, what else were they doing well um, that, that you saw at the game, Craig? I thought they uh, I thought they played great defense mm-hmm. uh, because basically if you look at I look at uh, Michigan State's box score, mm-hmm. basically the only guy who did 
the, the guy who did most of the damage was uh, I think his name's Greg Brown. Let me just. Uh, check. I think it's Gabe. 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 Gabe yeah. Brown. Gabe Brown. You're right. Mm-hmm. Gabe Brown, and it was basically just all he, he was basically just three pointing them to death. Like yeah. every he couldn't miss. It was unbelievable. He went for, he he went seven for nine. Mm-hmm. So seven. So, so, so with my math, how's it? Wait, uh, six, how's it? six for seven. Six for seven. Oh, six for seven. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm looking at. Yeah, field but list. he was pretty much the only one who did damage. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. He scored 20 of their 63 points. So he basically accounted for a third of their points. Mm-hmm. And then the only other player who scored uh, in double figures was uh, Bingham Jr. Mm-hmm. And that was basically it. Just phenomenal defense. And um, yeah, it's just just great. And also, I know we were, I know we're definitely going to talk about this. Mm-hmm. There was a seeming emergence of Dean Reber. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good, I mean, good he point. was. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know, man. My. Uh... My hot take of him of him starting at some point, you know, who knows? I mean, obviously Cliff Cliff has been great the past couple of games. He's he's coming into his own, obviously. But yeah. Dean, man, I think he only had like eleven minutes, right, and something like that. Yeah. And he yeah he had twelve points and 11, I mean yeah, new career. I think it's a new career high. Super yeah, career high twelve points. Super efficient. Um, a c- couple of rebounds. Uh, I mean, he's been you know Steve Pico talked him up quite a bit after the game, so. I mean, Rutgers obviously they need you know another another center to come in there and and do some damage and and Dean's been really st- in, in, you know stepping up as of late. Yeah, obviously he doesn't give the uh, the defense. He's not as great of a defender as Cliff, but I mean offensively he's been really good. Just I'm I'm just like so, like I'm not surprised because I figured that's like in the beginning of the year I did figure at some point he was going to jump to that uh, backup five role. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I'm shocked at how efficient he's been. I mean, five for, uh, yeah, five for six, 10 minutes on the floor, 12 points. Yeah. Like that's really good. That's, I mean, you, you almost couldn't ask for much more from yeah. a back, from a, from a backup five. Yeah. It, and, and he hits, and he hits threes. He was two threes. for, he had two threes. It's like <laughs> unbelievable. It's like yeah. Rutgers finally has a stretch five. <laughs> I mean, I, or maybe, I don't know. He's a little, he's a little bit, uh, He's kind of on the shorter side for a five, so maybe we'll still call him like a stretch four and a half. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that text the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, but yeah, he, he's great. Yeah, I mean, coming, you know, I, you know, when he was coming in as a recruit, um, I know I have, was talking to to Richie about him, and you know, we weren't really expecting a lot from from Dean, but he's you know far exceeded my expectations. Um, he's he's you know played very well this season in spot in spot minutes. Yeah, um, I definitely remember him as a recruit. Like, not no, not much people going after him. And right. Steve Pico was kind of the one. Is he the, is maybe you know better than me? Was it is this the one Power Five offer he got? I don't remember what offer he has. You know, I could check. I could check. Okay, quick. I know but I do come, remember came out of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I feel like this off season he lost he lost weight and gained gained a lot more athleticism than I saw last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that obviously has something to do with you know how much better he's, he's gotten. Um, let's see. So he, well, yeah, I definitely remember Richie talking about it and people basically saying this to Steve Peichel, mm-hmm. like, they're just like, why, like, why are you recruiting this guy? Like, what do you kind of like, what do you see in this guy? And Peichel really just stood by him. I like, you could see he was a gritty player, but it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was whether or not he had the talent to play at, you know, the big 10 level. Sure. Exactly. And I'm so far. Yeah, he has. And yeah, Steve you know, Peichel. I don't, I don't think, I don't think people really you know um what's it called expected you know his 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 offensive game to be where it's at yeah um so i was looking at his offers like the only other like major offers he has are from ohio and penn state mm-hmm. uh the rest are kind of like on the on the lower level like uh unc wilmington yeah. or east, east carolina appalachian state stuff like that so um i guess i guess you can call him a good a good find now he's fit well in the ed ruckers um he's he's been playing very well as of late and you know obviously like we've talked about over and over Rutgers needs more and more scorers to step up and and Dean has definitely stepped up um another guy I want to touch on real quick is Joe Baker um, I know we're a little bit harder on him a lot you know I, I, after on the last podcast he had zero points against Northwestern um he he came through this time uh 12 points four of seven shooting made made uh three three pointers had five assists um he had uh, obviously a much better game um he reached uh, 15,000 points for his career, which is, you know, a great milestone there. Um, so good. Wait, 15,000 kind of or 1,500? I'm sorry, 1,500. Yeah, yeah, I was about yeah. to say, 15,000. I was about to say, wow. he's, breaking, he's breaking tons of records. She got <laughs> yeah, my 000. God. Gio, <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get that banner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a couple guys came in late uh, late, late in the game. Oscar uh, Palmquist, Aiden Terry, Jane Jones, Luke Nathan came in at the end. Um, uh, Mag got, uh, got seven minutes. He's been kind of quiet since he had his one breakout game a couple couple games ago. 
Um, Jalen Miller, uh, Jalen Miller, um, he got hurt at the very end of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I know, um, it's I think he'll be okay. Uh, I'm not sure if he if he will play on Wednesday against Ohio State. Um, but he should be okay going forward. So I don't think it's um, anything too serious there. Um, mm-hmm. Kayla, Kayla McConnell had had 11 points and nine rebounds, almost had double double, four steals. Um, yeah, I'm looking know, at he had the most minutes of anybody on the floor. He had 37 good, minutes. Good point. 37 minutes. Yeah. Um, I know um, his shot taking sometimes is questionable. Um, it, it still was, you know, for the most part. But uh, f- you know, five of nine from the field. So. Obviously, a much but much more efficient game. I feel like a lot of the guys were super efficient. Yeah, I mean, Cliff, Cliff Cliff was six for six. Um, obviously, most of them were probably dunks at this point. Uh, you know, yeah. But Ron Ron uh, made six shots as well. He had seventeen points. Um, so I mean, just an all run effort. I mean, just you know, two years in a row now, Rutgers has has blown out Michigan State. Yeah, the last two games they beat him by a combined fifty one. I mean, yeah, whoever yeah, they went for, they, I think, yeah, they went from not being able to beat them. I think they were like 0 and 11 all they time. They were 0 and 10. Them. I believe they're 0 and 10. 10. Uh, uh, yeah. Heading into last year. Yeah. 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 Now, the last two times they've played them, they beat them by a combined 51. I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, if you ever told a Rutgers fan that from like, you know, three years ago, they'd probably think you're on like some kind of drug or something. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. Rutgers has played Michigan State well a couple games, you know, even though, even, even though they did lose. Uh, but yeah, they finally got over the hump last year. I know Michigan State was a little bit down last year, uh, but obviously not this time around. And you know, Rutgers really, really took it to him. I know um, Coach Pico was talking about how you know his team was very physical uh, in the game. They, you know, they they defended well. Um, I know there were times where Michigan State, you know, tied the game in the first half, and uh, Rutgers pulled pulled away. Um, they uh, Michigan State made a three right at the end of the second half. I mean, uh, end of the first half, right, right, right near the buzzer, um, and they really pulled pulled away in the second half. Um, yeah, they, I know Rutgers never trailed. I know at one they, point they never like, trailed. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Rutgers led for. Does it have it on here? Rutgers. I mean, obviously the whole game, but yeah. I think it was tied. Uh, let's see. It was only tied once. So I mean, that's yes. just that's just a great job by Rutgers. Honestly, great, great game. Um, so they're net right now. I know there's obviously still ways away. Rutgers still has a lot of work to do, but their net ranking right now is at 99. So they're 100 yesterday, okay. and now they're 99. So they're Back in the to double digits. digits. <laughs> they're right in the cusp of the of the double digits. So, I mean, if they get string together a couple more wins now, and you know, who yeah, knows? What now they just need to. Yeah, now they kind of just need to do uh, what they did against Michigan State. So just do it eight more times, and. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I, I touched on it in my article yesterday. I mean, you know, this this is, you know, when Rutgers is on, you know, they could be a very good team. Like, they look like a team that can make a run in a tournament. But then they go on the road and they look absolutely lost. So, I mean, you know, I yeah. mean, you never know what Rutgers team you're, you're going to get pretty much on yeah, day. They're, day yeah. day they're very inconsistent and they yeah. definitely they play up and down to their competition. Mm-hmm. But I guess the, the bright side is that pretty much every team they play from here on out is good so he would hope that uh they play up <laughs> yeah 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 maybe you know you know next you know after ohio state on wednesday uh they got wisconsin on the road so maybe you know not looking far too ahead to wisconsin but uh maybe they'll see wisconsin on the jersey and obviously play up play up to their standards uh you know obviously play up you know you know they're not playing you match up like that they're playing wisconsin so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and did yeah. you, i saw that did you you, obviously, you saw the jerseys, the uh, the mm-hmm. new jerseys. Mm-hmm. At first, I was, I don't know, that's like aesthetically, I was like, eh, but actually, I kind of like them. I think after I watched them, I saw them live, like I saw them live, and I, mm-hmm. the more I looked at them, I'm like, oh, they're pretty nice. I yeah, like the, yeah. <laughs> at, at first, when I saw them, I didn't know like what the deal was, but obviously, is you know, Black Black um, History Month, the Black Excellence stuff like that. It was really cool. Um, I, I did like the jerseys. I like the flowers, everything, the designs on them. They're, they're yeah, different. They're obviously different fuckers, but they were. They're, they're they're pretty cool yeah i like the sides too they're pretty mm-hmm. cool <laughs> all right so uh you got anything uh on, on ohio state on wednesday at the rack uh seven o'clock game uh it's gonna be tough i mean ohio state's a good team i feel like like rutgers matches matched up pretty well with michigan state i'll be interested mm-hmm. to see how they match up with ohio state because the lot last last i don't re- i don't remember like it just feels like a lot of times when rutgers plays them they kind of hit yeah. Kind of hit like a wall against them for some reason. I, I yeah, I feel like last year. I remember last year's game. Like I felt like Rutgers was like the better team, mm-hmm. um, but obviously you know they just had a couple more bigs inside that were able to get some rebounds and won the game. 
Um, I mean, EJ e. Liddell is a very good player. So mm. obviously they have, you know, more firepower than him. So, yeah, yeah it's gonna, but it's I guess the bright side. Matchup, but yeah, I guess the bright side is, is that Jersey Mike's and Rector seems home. to play really well there. So, sure. Sure. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, yeah when it comes I mean, to this game, comes to this game, I mean, this just just nothing but really no, nothing but positivity for this game. They were they were great in this game. They deserve all the credit Absolutely. in the world. So, yeah, this is just a this is just a great game for them. And, Absolutely. you know, let's see if they can piece together a, a couple more and see if they can climb back into this. Sure. I know. I, f- I feel like I'm, I might have I might have mentioned it last time, but like I feel like we're kind of like a jinx. You know, we started doing these podcasts <laughs> and they haven't really won. But so <laughs> but now it's finally a positive one. No, now it's finally a positive podcast. <laughs> So, all right, Craig. Well, thank, thanks for hopping on. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that, all that jazz, and uh, see you on the boards. <laughs>